I suppose, in a way, I always felt that the veil of this reality was thinly drawn. That if I were to only reach out my hand, it would part before me, revealing a world much more complex than I ever could imagine. Hey everyone, Anna J. Walner with Indie Author Chat, and today I am delighted to bring on the show Jennifer Lee Pisano, who is an independent author as well. Jennifer, would you like to tell us about your book, Awakening? Yes, and thank you so much for having me on here. Thank um, you. Yeah, my book, Awakening, was um, kind of a an experiment of sorts in the beginning. Um, about two years ago, I decided to sit down and attempt to write a story. <laughs> I've been writing since I was, gosh, a 10, I think. I've always been immersed in the world of novels and, you know, journaling and then poetry mm -hmm. as I hit my teens, um, which actually kind of saved me <laughs> in a lot of ways. So it's a tough period. Um, to be alive and poetry kind of kept sure. me grounded and, and focused. So I um, finally decided to sit down and see if I could merge um, poetry with, with a really good story. And it just kind of came out of me. Um, I didn't plan anything, I just flowed. It was really, really fun <laughs> to put together. And the genre was something that I had been wanting to explore for a really long time. In my early 20s, I devoured Anne Rice. Um, I just absolutely fell in love with her characters. Um, and I've always been fascinated by the concept of the vampire. But at the same time, there were aspects of it that left me a little bit unsatisfied. Like I wanted more. Um, I felt like there were all these cliches that um, I wanted to move past and explore different aspects of what the vampire could mean. Um, I like that. Yeah. And so my, this story kind of, it, it blends, you know, it blends like aspects of spirituality, healing, um, you know, sexuality, sensuality, all of those things, which I think are very closely interconnected. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a, a book divided into three parts. Um, so my characters, there's actually two characters that um, are named Jezebel, <laughs> as you'll learn as you, as you read. Um, the first one is, is the woman in um, modern, modern day. Though actually I realized I had to go back and change that because it can't be not modern day anymore, <laughs> unless I want to, you know, add the pandemic into my story, which I didn't. So <laughs> I know, a, I know. I, I, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen that on, on Twitter, you know, about whether or not do you want to add, and I, uh, I made the decision to just leave it out completely. And I think a, a lot of people are just kind of omitting it from, from, yeah from books so yeah we, we got enough of it everywhere yeah <laughs> from reality <laughs> yeah so um yeah so the first the first uh part is is current day the second part dives back into the 1700s and then it, it slips oh. back to current. so it takes you on this this kind of journey of through time and all these different places that um they travel to and um yeah, it was, it's been a really fun adventure putting it together. So it sounds fantastic, and from what I've read, uh, it reads so beautiful. The lyrical writing that you have is almost like poetry, but on on the page. Uh, and so, has your has your your writing as a poet? help to influence your writing style as a novelist, as an author? I think so. Yes. I think my, my writing is definitely heavily influenced by my poetry. I would um, say so. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and I had to, I had to fight for it too. You know, like I um, mentioned to you before we, we started filming that I was in a critique group. And so I would swap chapters with other writers. And 
so many people would be like, this is way too poetic. You need more stripped down narrative prose. And I'm like, no, I'm not writing a movie script. You know, I'm writing for me, poetry is a way to invoke emotion. And I pull in all aspects of sensory. You know, I'm, I'm, my stories are very heavily um, influenced just by the scenery. I think scenes evoke tones and emotion that, you know, guide the story forward. And so you use all of those aspects to create this, you know, kind of more cohesive emotional tone in my story. And that's where words have this amazing power to do that. So I, you know, I, I was joking, my, I mean, I hold on to my adverbs, you know, very tightly. <laughs> you can't take them away from me. <laughs> no, it's, um, it, when I was, when I did, uh, was reading the, the scenery that, that you describe is so vivid, the world building that you do, even for it being in present day, and I have not gotten as far as the second part, which I'm excited to do, but, um, but just painting the view of this small coastal town, uh, did you have any inspiration? You live in Oregon, um, did you draw any inspiration from places that you visited or that you like to visit along the coastline? Um, a little bit, yeah. I've always loved the ocean. Um, it's oh, me too. My special place, yeah. My place where I go to kind of re-center myself and reinvigorate myself. So um, actually, this story I'm writing currently also has aspects of the ocean in it too. So I kind of have always have to pull some little bit of the ocean into my stories. I um, love that. Yeah. So yeah, the ocean is definitely um, something I love um, having um, a part of my my world building. Um, and it's, I mean, the, the story, um, there's a lot of travel. Um, the third part, it takes place in Rome, which I've never been, <laughs> but I so want to go. I had to do a lot of research. When research. I was part and I'm just like oh, I need to go to Rome this is my Google Earth. Google Earth and then and then do the uh, the street view and and look around <laughs> oh it's gorgeous it's just wow so it's on my bucket list definitely I'm going to Rome one day soon um and then yeah it, it the story was set on on the east coast it's kind of in the Massachusetts Boston area which my husband okay. Um, is from so he was he was pleased I kind of inserted some of his um, east coast uh, roots into the story <laughs> well, but above everything else this is a love story and a paranormal romance a sensual paranormal romance have you uh you said that you've always been fascinated with this genre and uh is this the the only book that you've written in the paranormal romance fantasy genre or uh you mentioned a, a work in progress does it also feature ha, have you stayed with that do you find that that's um, where your niche is your heart is no, as a writer actually, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place when it comes to okay. kind of a genre bender <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like i don't want to be stuck in one in one particular um, genre because there's just so many amazing stories out there and I kind of just want to explore all the avenues. Um, I mean, personally, I generally read a lot of dystopian novels. So at, at some point I would love to experiment with, with dystopian. Um, I have like two different stories on the back burner right now. One's just about complete and the other one is still in its infant stage. Um, and you know, one of them's a historical romance and the other one's more contemporary. So I'm just all over the place <laughs> is pretty much, you know, but this, this story I wanted to um, dive into first because it just was a really fascinating concept to me. I kind of just had to get it out of my system, so. <laughs> it, it to me almost seems like something that snuck up on you and maybe like in a dream or something that you couldn't get out of your mind that kept singing to you and, and until you wrote it. I mean, that's how, that's how passionate it reads just from the first bit is that it's something that wouldn't, it, it wouldn't let me go. So I can imagine that it, it brewing inside 
you know, your mind, it was just begging to be poured out onto the page. Yeah, it kind of was. It kind of took over me in a way. And I remember telling my friends when I, I can started. tell. <laughs> they're like, what, what book are you ready? I'm like, it's about vampires. And they're like, huh? <laughs> I've gotten that too. I never would have thought you of all people <laughs> would be writing about vampires. And I'm like, and that just, yeah, it was interesting. I'm like, that is interesting. That that's what came out of me. Um, but yeah, like you said, it did, it just kind of came over me and took over. And um, like I said, the story just poured out um, of its own volition. I didn't do any plotting. Um, that was just all like stream of consciousness. Um, and it somehow all managed to coalesce in the cohesive manuscript. So I'm like, yay. And well, that that's the best feeling whenever you can write from your, you know, your emotion and, and what, what you're passionate about. It does tend to just flow. And I also am a pantser. I don't plot. And it's more fun for me that way. I, I give kudos to those who can have the patience to plot, right. but I do, but I don't. And so it's, uh, but, but yes, the, it jumps off of the page at you. Let me just say that whenever you, the first just couple of paragraphs, you can tell that this is, this is a book that's not only <clears throat> that's not only captivating but it's something that you as an author were passionate about it jumps out at the reader which is a fantastic organic natural talent that that you have so thank you <laughs> well yeah it's interesting when i started you know this journey two years ago i thought you know i'm not i'm just i'm not gonna have the time you know and the fortitude to sit down and like write a whole story but it in fact, it was kind of the opposite. I discovered that I became so immersed that it was hard for me to pull myself out and join reality. So it became, I need to stop writing and go back to my life. <laughs> you know, I'm like, and I never thought that that I would that that would be my problem. <laughs> I thought it'd be the opposite. So that's when I learned. I'm like, okay, this is it. Like, I've I finally found, you know the thing that makes me passionate that gives me a sense of empowerment no and that's so I haven't been able to stop since <laughs> that's fantastic and I think that's uh you said you mentioned dystopia which is also it's under that umbrella of fantasy as well dystopian fantasy and I think that that's one of the fun things about writing fantasy is that you get to as you're writing live in that world for a brief moment of time and escape your own reality along with your characters that you you walk alongside of them and experience the same things that they do kind of in your own mind it's tough to come back to reality i when you were saying that i'm sitting here thinking oh man i i was there i understand you i understand it i understand it all too well because right now who really wants to come, come back to reality no right <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a it's a glorious form of escapism, um, and it can be very productive. So I'm, you know, it can, and it's really honestly, guy, it, it has helped me to stay sane during this whole thing, because being stuck inside, you you need, especially, I have a one and a half year old, and it's tough to find some t some um, some release within your own mind to kind yeah. of yeah it's so it's like, like adult thoughts and things like that yeah it can be challenging <laughs> yeah even keeping a journal which I which I do do but um but writing just it it helps you to kind of I don't know just escape for a little while which is nice and the and I think the fun thing about being a pantser opposed to being a plotter like we were talking about is <laughs> is that in a way you become the reader and the writer, you know, you don't know what's happening next. And you're like, oh, we're doing this now. Oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I didn't see that twist coming. So I love sense. how you put that. Say that again. <laughs> really? It makes, it makes you the reader and the writer at the same yeah. time. It does. You, I've, it, you put it, I mean, it's so simple now that you say it to think of it like that, but you are the reader and the writer at the same time. 
whenever you're whenever you're a panther because you're just as surprised writing that next sentence as you know hopefully your reader will be you're like I didn't expect my character to do that but it works so that's where we're going (laughs) yeah no it's it's like magic alchemy (laughs) yep so uh speaking of um Jezebel and August are the central driving characters in the book. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Um, yeah, I can touch touch on them. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, this, yeah, this story is in three parts. And so there are two Jezebels and the story. Oh, um, okay. Yes. The story is, um, evolves around uh, the interconnectedness of all of these three characters in the story. So the first part opens up into, you know, current day and then um, dives into the past and then comes full circle into the present again. And um, so these, you know, both these Jezebels, they have this, they have this connection um, throughout the story that you eventually learn about. And, you know, they, they do have a lot in common. They're both women that are, you know, escaping the pain of of the past um and they're both you know strong and independent but you know there's this part that's missing you know in the heart um a lot about you know opening up letting go you know healing those kind of um things are kind of a central focus for their characters and august as well he's a um a brooding you know (laughs) a brooding man who's had a tragedy occur to him that you know happened years ago that he's you know still trying to heal from so so, spiritual growth and spiritual um sort of um a spiritual journey to to a healthier a healthier mindset is kind of a theme that it seems like is involved in the book and dealing with your past and past and past and past it seems yes and and the wounds you know that we carry and how we you know, go about healing them you know and <clears throat> I know it might sound cheesy but you know I all of my stories that I write they do though I may jump around in genre um there is a, a general theme and it's all love you know it's about the healing power of love, you know, and how love can really help you open up and see yourself for who you really are. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful thing to explore and dance around. So that's something that um, has been really fun for me. So yes. I love that. I love that. So uh, Awakening was just released on the 1st of January. And uh, you, oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, that's a notification um, about the interview that we're doing right now. That's late. <laughs> uh, yeah, I told you this is unscripted. So, um, can uh, can you tell us? Um, are we going to see this? Is is this a standalone, or is this the beginning of something else? Will we see more of these uh, characters I- in the future? Maybe. Um, okay. Actually, it was originally, my plan was to originally have it, because I said it was in three parts, was to originally have it be three different books. Um, okay. I guess it would be more no- novellas, because they would be shorter, you know, about 30, 40 words. But the control freak in me hated the idea of somebody reading these out of order. <laughs> so uh. I decided to lump them all together into one one solid book. Um I, personally, for me, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of, um, you know, trilogies. I don't get into a whole lot of trilogies because I'm just so impatient. I hate having to wait for the next one or it just drives me crazy. Like they leave you with this cliffhanger and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so hate I just people. kind of wanted to, yeah, I wanted to, to write a book that, you, you know, tied everything up in the end. Um, but still at the same time left, yeah, left the possibility for Possibility. More. Yes, there, there because, is a possibility for more. Um, so because we'll I know just as much as authors fall in love with their characters, so do their readers. And, and we might want to see more of, of Jezebel and August. Yeah, I kind of want to as well. I think the <laughs> hardest part of writing this book was like ending it was, you know, like after all the revisions and the editing, because it took me 
the writing the book itself didn't actually take me that long. It was just, um, I spent about a, over a year revising and editing, and revising and editing. And I didn't want to let it go. <laughs> it was like, can I just hold on to it for just coddle it for another couple of years and then I'll let it go and, and try to publish. And everyone's just like, no, I need to read it now. Cause I was kind of holding it hostage from all my friends. I didn't let them read my book until I, like I wanted them to read it like in its paperback form. So I right. made them wait a long time <laughs> until they got to read it. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it is tough. Um, that is one of the things that uh, people ask all the time is how long did it take you to finish the book? And I try and explain to people it's the writing, like the, the actual typing and getting it out uh, doesn't take that long. What takes that long, uh, the, for you to be finally done is really going back through and making it the best version of what it can be. So, mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like that was the same for, for awakening, which it does show a very polished beauty. I can't, y'all, I can't say enough about these the 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 prose the lyrical way that it just flows is something that I'm not capable of and I'm deeply envious of so you have you you have made me envious of you your your writing style without a doubt thank you I will, that's really sweet I appreciate that do you want to know a secret sure myself <laughs> I edit the story myself um as well so that that mm -hmm. was another thing I didn't even think I was going to jump into but um yeah once again just all these amazing you know software and things that are available to us all these tools that we can use um to edit our story um I think that was I I did send it out to a few editors and what they gave back to me was just them kind of trying to write over my voice and I was like, it's not going to work. Like, you know, this is my voice. So unless I get lucky and I find an editor who gets my voice and then I won't try to manipulate it, you know, to fit there. Right. So yeah. It's just like, you know, I'm just going to try to do this myself, you know, because it is fine for it. You know, it actually was not hard for me to get in that headspace of, of heavy editing and, you know, doing that. So. And it does come across as your own, as a very personal voice. There's no voice lost there. It maintains a, a very unique um, way of, of writing. So it's definitely, you did a fantastic job in keeping it, keeping it the way that it was meant to be. And sometimes, yes, um, you know, uh, that's the unfortunate part was with beta readers or critique partners or anybody that helps you with your story is that if you don't feel as an author that you want to change that part, that it needs to be in there, then listen to your gut because it's your story and it's your yeah. voice. Yeah. So and yeah, the, I, was the, pretty, I was pretty adamant about keeping that. Good, <laughs> good. Um, and it's funny because I'm really indecisive person by nature. I struggle with that just in general, like making choices. But mm -hmm. when I came to my story, I was just like very, it was very clear to me that I needed to, you know, preserve is preserve my voice into this manuscript. So. Well, uh, I, you did a fantastic job and I cannot wait to dive into the book uh, as, as we were talking about earlier. My TBR list is getting quite long. But uh, but with, without a doubt, guys, check out the book. It is fantastic. And even it, after reading the first few pages, um, you're going to be wanting more because it is, it's different from anything that I've read um, before. And I know that, that you had said that it's your, that, and what is it? Um, I love the quote that's on Amazon and it's at the first, at the beginning of the video. Thank you so much for letting me, for letting me voice that over because it's so beautiful. It, 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 it's such a beautiful quote. Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't recall it from memory. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I'm I said, so I've never had someone, you know, read 
my work out loud like that other than myself. So I was like, oh, wow, she made that sound so eloquent. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> It, no, it, it, it's, it, it's really, it's the words because whenever you, in the same way that I spoke them, people read them and they are so very eloquently written that they just kind of have that natural cadence to them that makes yeah. them easy to read in a very pleasant and pleasing way. No. So. But I can't, I can't wait to hear how you think, because I know you, you know, as we said, you have dived into, you know, the same um, genre and concept as me. So I'm looking forward to checking out your book when it comes out as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. To see what your story is all about. So. Thank you. But um, I just, guys, go check out Awakening by Jennifer Lee Pisano, and uh, it is available now, and go check it out. So thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat with me today. I really thoroughly enjoyed getting to hear about your uh, the process behind what you do and how your your history and poetry plays into I knew that it did there's no escaping it I just no, it's can't pretty odd. <laughs> <laughs> but before before we go do you have any um, advice for other self I think we covered that I think if I could say uh, the best advice that you gave is don't let anyone silence your voice because as an author yeah. Your story is your story. No one can write it the way that you can. That's right. I agree. That's my so, message. Stay true so. to your voice. Absolutely. Well, everyone stay safe, uh, stay healthy. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any uh, upcoming guests. And uh, thank you again so, so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys.